Hi, everyone. Welcome to our California mini retreat episode. This is a first. Not only is it the first time that um, we're recording at a mini retreat, all four co-hosts, um, but it's also in person the first time we've ever recorded an episode. So we are excited to get this started and um, not know where we're going, but enjoy the ride because why the hell not? So I'm uh, definitely enjoying being here. Yeah, this has been a really fun experience so far. And to be honest, I'm shitting bricks right now. It's been so fun to have everybody together and just going through it all together and just trying to stay as open as possible. And yeah, I felt very like just loved in a way that is just like completely <laughs> without need, you know, just by being in this group so it's been a really fun couple days and it's gonna be a pretty fun evening I presume but yeah this is an amazing first and I'm just excited to get into it yeah likewise it's been uh been an absolute blast of a weekend so far being able to just hang with everyone and get to know everyone a little bit more and you know, continue to jump into things that you know, may seem uncomfortable for whatever reason. There's still, you know, for me with social situations, a lot of fear comes up that I I don't even realize sometimes how much was in there. And so I appreciate you know, all of you because you inspire me a lot. It's like jumping in things because yeah I uh I tend to be afraid of a lot of stuff and uh, it's uh yeah it's it's been a lot of fun just being able to continue to jump in and notice when I'm feeling uncomfortable and you know push a little further um and it's been cool to be in an environment where it's not going to be judged or looked at, um, even if you, you know, stumble here and there. But yeah, likewise, shit and bricks. <laughs> but, you know, just hesitant um, about, yeah, different things. I personally have to say that I, I love your specific or personal definition of fun because that didn't sound like fun at all. Um, and because there's elements of fun, like there's there's the up and down that goes with it, but then there's the part where you're going through things that you didn't know you could go through and you're seeing things you didn't know you could see and you have to deal with those experiences. And, you know, these uh, these retreats are always so interesting for me because I get a different look at the spectrum in terms of what we're dealing with with our minds and and the experience of our mind and i was thinking about this earlier this morning and i wanted to to share it with all of you just because i liked it <laughs> that's a good enough reason um imagine watching a movie and while you're watching that movie different things are happening characters are going through stuff having dialogue so on and so forth but every time something happens you pause the movie you stop you reflect on it you talk about it you bitch about it you complain about it you talk to other people about it you have all these opinions about it and then you continue the movie just to find out that all of those things that you just went through were totally wrong because you didn't watch the next part that is very much what we do with our mind like we are constantly going through a flow of perceptions ways of looking at ourselves and thus looking at the world around us and all of a sudden we come to a a scary part of that movie or we come to a part of that movie that we like and we really focus in on it and we get lost in it thinking that that's the whole movie and we react to that moment like oh my god it's a scary monster and we go and hide two minutes later in the movie the scary monster might have been defeated or you might have discovered it wasn't a scary monster but that reaction that reaction became reality for you all of a sudden the movie changed. And that's the thing about this particular movie is that as soon as you react to it, it changes. Because the movie is you. It's your growth, it's your mind, it's your awareness working out the next stages of self-awareness. And so as it's going through that, 
and you see all of these different perceptions and your context widens, as soon as you react, the whole play has to change accordingly because you've reacted. So now all of a sudden the, the movie changes to be appropriate to your reaction. And instead of doing that, you could just let the movie play. Just watch it. And you know, it's funny because I'm saying a movie, but I really mean the ongoing process of being you. It's not just thoughts, it's not just feelings, it's not just physical sensations, it's the whole thing. And that, when I talk about life, when we do this podcast, when I share these insights and I, and I do all that, people have this tendency of thinking that, oh wow, you know, like Ray sounds like a really smart guy, he sounds really intelligent, he's really, you know, worked all this out. I've just spent a long time watching the movie without interrupting it. That's all. And so my appreciation of it is different. I got tired of reacting to every moment. I got tired of creating my own hell instead of just watching what was happening in my mind, in me, as me. And in that watching, in that being present in the experience of you, there is that influence over the movie. But if you're not aware of it, fuck, you jerk that movie around like a motherfucker and you cause so much strife just because all of a sudden you're just like, oh God, I don't like that. And you swing. And of course you've changed the whole movie. It's very much like a dream in that way. As soon as you react in fear to a dream, it turns into a nightmare. There's no difference here. And so if there's anything that I'd like to pass on, it's just beware the urge to react to that single frame, that single moment. Beware the urge to hastily respond before allowing yourself to see the context. Because the, the context will change how you interact with it. It will change the decisions that you make. And so just breathe. Breathe. Ground yourself in the experience you're having, not your perception of it. You can feel the air on your skin. You can feel your presence here. You can feel the ground beneath your feet. There are infinite perceptions of that experience, but those things are real. Just ground yourself in that and let it pass. And before you know it, a moment of clarity will come about and it will all make sense for at least a few moments. And then you'll get sucked right back into it. But do remember, you're not going through a list of, or a series of concepts and ideas and insights. You're going through a series of perceptions of yourself. And while you can be kind of theoretically aware of it, like, oh, this is when I'm feeling insecure and this is when I'm feeling afraid and so on and so forth, it's totally different when you're in it. You can know about the feeling, but when you're having that feeling, it's like it's all there is. And don't react at that point because then it'll pass. But if you react, then you're stuck in your reaction and you have to wait for the movie to play a little bit more. And then you'll figure out not to react next time. And that's all this is. And you can shortcut all of that by just having the patience to let yourself process. Just breathe. It'll all make sense eventually. As, as you're going through different things, it, that sense of a certain fear, you know, if you focus on that fear, it's like things have a way of seeming to solidify it in a sense, but it's just because, you know, you're focused on it, you're looking at it, and then it, it appears that everything plays in to that perception, but it's still, yeah, it's still thought, it's still entirely response to whatever is happening in in reality and you know you can't take those perceptions any more seriously you can take anything that you go through any perception of any experience that you've gone through that you know didn't seem to make sense at the time you know it has a way of doing so it's not just not personal like 
that's it's just so close and you think because your perspective of yourself and the situation is the one you're constantly faced with you know when you have a moment with yourself or even in social situations because yeah there's been a lot of that this weekend of just none of these people know me and I'm assuming they see me in the way I see myself and it's all just the habitual thoughts that I've <laughs> been building my entire life and so detaching from them can be difficult but yeah n it's not personal like there's infinite perspectives of how you could be perceived it's not even worth investing in and yeah so yesterday we <laughs> had a fun little trip and I was just sitting back and it's funny though when you realize a pattern it that you do like um you know I'm I'm detached I was judging myself for not feeling the ups and downs as much I was like <laughs> I want to be processing some shit and am I just dancing around it am I avoiding it by just you know, having fun, but at the same time, like, what do I want? Shit, <laughs> right? And I can just let whatever thoughts are running through my mind at any moment process, just pass by and just sit and watch them go. And that only following them is what winds you. It's it's what, that's what leads you to hell is following that trail of thoughts and perspectives of yourself that just put you in a box and like create all this pressure where there really doesn't need to be any. And when you remember that everybody else is faced with that exact same fucking thing, like Andrew, you were saying, yeah, like we all are shitting bricks, you know, mm -hmm. constantly. And at least we don't need to feel so alone in that even though it's, we are alone <laughs> together, but there's no difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Um, it's like, um, we're all feeling uncomfortable. And despite that discomfort, I can still pay attention to something more than just not having an expectation met, not having a need met, not having an assumption met and having it blow up in my face. And then I'm like, okay, well, yeah other things are still happening outside of uh, outside of my perception there's still this whole moment there's still everyone else that's here there's still so much more than just what I'm seeing or what what I'm willing to acknowledge and so when we were having the trip yesterday I was definitely having waves of like an anxiety will hit me and then I'm like oh no <laughs> and I could just like feel myself clenching and I was like yeah but you know and I was like it almost felt like I was like peeking around the clenching and I was like yeah but let's there's a there's a little bit more happening okay well we can clench and laugh we can clench and play pool and we can still just <laughs> and just like almost admitting that it was just like okay then it just it just felt like I wasn't so zoomed in on just one part of the table right and so I'm I'm I, I am the table and yet sometimes it feels like I'm so zoomed in on one little corner that it feels like all I am is that corner or all I am is that piece but that's just because I'm so zoomed in mm -hmm. and when I can just admit that I'm zoomed in or not even admit it just notice that I'm zoomed in and then be like okay well what else can I do and just exploring options without actually having to commit to anything and I think that's given me a lot of space to just um explore I think that's kind of the important part about it is that the spectrum of the movie that we're going through is some of it's really uncomfortable this kind of goes back to what Andrew was saying about fun um a lot of the fun that we have in our lives now at one point were they were challenges you know, like we have fun walking around and running. At one point, that was difficult to do, right? We had to face certain fears, right? We had to fall. We had to hurt ourselves. None of that was fun. 
but it led to fun. And there are parts of the movie or parts of our lives or perceptions of ourselves or perceptions of the world. We had uh, somebody join us at one of the retreats who had been dealing with a fear of his family killing him in the night. There was no evidence whatsoever. In fact, the relationship was just fine. But the, th the thought would pop up. And of course, because it was something he was afraid of, he'd grab onto it, trying to resolve it. And immediately he would end up stuck in it because these thoughts have no resolution. They are always going to exist. You can't magically solve them and make them stop being an option. And so a lot of us, we try to cover them up. We try and keep ourselves up here. We, we tell ourselves stories that make us feel like we're safe. Like, you know, oh, I'm happy. My life is wonderful. We're content. We're connected. We're light and love, all that stuff. And the reason is because underlying all of our other perceptions are those dark ones where we feel alone, where we feel afraid, where we feel like we're in danger and we always will be. And we're influenced by them. They have a tug on us. And that's why we try so hard to feel better is because we don't want to look at them. We don't want to accept them. And we think that we're actually victim to them. So we don't get into them. But it's worth it to get into them. It's worth it to allow yourself to be afraid. It's worth it to allow yourself to feel alone. It's worth it for you to allow yourself to go through the emotional spectrum from one end to the other. Because you reap the rewards from doing so. It doesn't feel like it as you're doing so. But everything you've ever done in your life has led to you understanding what you understand now. Going through the spectrum is no different. If you find yourself in a state of mind where you hate your life, where all of a sudden you feel like you want to die, just feel that. Just feel that for what it is. Accept it's an option. Accept it's a possible, it's a possible perception of your existence. Accept it. Don't run from it. Don't think it means anything from you or about you. Just look at it for what it is and then move on. It's the judgment of it. It's the fear of it. It's the reaction to it that gets us stuck in it. All of a sudden, oh my God, there's something wrong with me because I feel like everyone hates me. It's like every other perception in your mind. You know, it's, not, it's not the whole truth. It might not even be any of the truth whatsoever. That doesn't mean it doesn't feel true. It feels true when you're in it because it's you. You know, the perception you choose to invest in is as real as you are. It helps to know that, you know, but it also means it's easy to get sucked in. And the only thing you can do is just remember, wait it out, wait it out. Don't react because in reacting, you're solidifying it. You're perpetuating it. You're holding it in front of you. And all you have to do is just let it blow away. And it will. But as soon as you start thinking about yourself, it gets entrenched. And the point being, when you feel those things, rejoice. If you can, while you're crying. <laughs> and it's because you're learning. You're growing. You're, you're processing context. You're processing things that are uncomfortable, which is why you're learning so much. They are outside of the spectrum that you tend to stay within. And that's where growth happens. It's not a bad thing. Just watch it. It's the reaction that's the problem. It's really all it is. You, know, you can watch the shit in your head all day long and then move on despite it. But when we get stuck in something, we want to solve it. We want it to go away. We want to feel better. And in that urge to feel better, we make that hole so much deeper. You don't need to feel better. You are just fine. Just breathe. And allow whatever you're going through to keep going. And it'll change into something else because you are not the you you're thinking of. You are change. Allow yourself to be yourself. And then as you do experience certain fears and they pop up, like in the reaction to them, it's like it totally dictates that experience that you continue to have as you go. And it's like because reality can be very reflective and it's like even just responding to certain 
you know, things you notice. You don't notice everything necessarily. And so if there is, you know, a certain fear that's a focus at the forefront of a focus, it's like every experience is almost filtered through that as it becomes the focus. And so even just understanding that, like, oh, this is going to filter my reality right now. Just that recognition, there can be almost like, I don't know, feels like a, a settling or an opportunity to realize like, oh, this is, this is a point where I'm gaining context for something new. You know, it's like we go through familiar situations and there's familiar sort of perceptions of, of yourself or experiences or things that you're going through. And then as you go into new situations, different situations, situations that don't seem, just don't seem as familiar. It's like those thoughts that come up aren't as familiar. It's like the ones that are familiar, they're still taking you from the experience that you're having, but because they're familiar, it's like you have a familiar response to them. And it's like, yeah, this one, you know, it doesn't feel great, but at least I, at least I know this one. And I've, I've learned to kind of create a life around that perception of yourself and done things in response to, you know, mitigate that perception. And then you jump yeah. into new things, you get outside of your comfort zone and, you know, those familiar ones maybe are still there, but as you go through new perceptions too, and it's like, they almost feel more real because they're new, because they're, they're different, you know, they're, they're not as comfortable of uncomfortable thoughts to go through or as comfortable of you know, distractions just from what you're feeling or experiencing in the moment. And so as you continue to go through those and gain context and go into more situations that are outside of that comfort zone, like you simultaneously get to work through different perceptions of yourself, different fears that you didn't even know were there because you're maintaining that comfort zone, you're maintaining that sense of security, but that was traded, like it was traded for, you know, a disempowering feeling about yourself. And anytime you look to something else or someone else, it's like there's going to be that component of yourself and ability to express yourself and be, be yourself that's almost traded. And so the less security you're willing to hold on to or feel like you need, the more strength you can build in yourself. But there's a process of that being built and, you know, continuing to face things. It's not like you can just jump into new stuff and do the same sort of things. It's like your life changes, you change. And a part of that is, or seems to be, you know, seeing different potential perspectives of, of yourself and perspectives of reality. You know, it's funny. Yeah. We always, we like want to grow, but um, the conceptual idea of growth is a lot different than actually just going through it. And Yesterday, I was thinking about it as like carving my way through. And that doesn't sound the most pleasant. You know, it's almost like I'm being shoved through reality <laughs> kind of against my will. And I don't really have a choice but to grow. And it's never going to be comfortable. It never was. As soon as you were born, it was just cold and unforgiving. <laughs> no, I see. And no wonder I built all these defense mechanisms and ideas of myself and tried to like hold on to anything that I could to make myself feel better. And we're really just hopeful. And we invest in these ideas of, you know, a place or enlightenment or just somewhere else where everything makes sense or like a solution. We just want an answer so bad and nobody has yours except for yourself and and it's not even an answer per se it's kind of just you learn to relax and the more that you relax the more comes up so it really isn't comfortable 
a lot of the time, which is interesting. You would just assume that being more relaxed would make things easier. And it does in some ways, but yeah, that shit is always on the table. And there's something to be said, though, for just sitting through it and you you start to realize like you know even if you're if it you're breaking down rolling around on the floor crying or like you have to go hide in your room and in the dark and like in the fetal position like you're dealing with it you're facing that shit and you're gonna you know go to bed tonight and wake up to tomorrow and like so it's no perspective is so none of them are true so none of them are bigger than you you know they're all just possible and um yeah clinging to that certain ones for certainty and stability is a double-edged sword because then there's always the possibility of it take it being taken from you but if you can just like let go and be like well I'll always have me and it's just blind faith really but you're a lot more capable and intelligent and um, strong than any of us give ourselves credit for. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's been fun to realize and just sit in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, change doesn't have to be so unbearably painful. And when I think about the times that change has felt the most uncomfortable, it's always when I've gotten this idea that I'm losing something and it's and it's the thing that feels like it's being lost is the comfort is the story is the coping mechanism is the way that I'm trying to make myself feel better mm -hmm. and lately I've been really appreciating when things don't go the way that I expect them to because all those triggering moments are full of opportunities and I used to say that those triggering moments were teachers and because that's how I've heard that phrase before was just that when something doesn't go your way you know that's that's a lesson and it's like I don't know if it's necessarily a lesson but there's there's an opportunity for me to do something with that and when I see that I am getting upset or I'm feeling like I'm losing something or I'm just it's just feeling like the change is is unbearable um it's being able to admit to myself that I was holding on to something and I was holding on to this idea that I could control the process, the end result, that I could control my life, that I could control me, you know, because that is a lot more comforting than admitting that I don't know, that I just don't know. And no matter what I'm, what no matter what I'm looking at, um, no matter what I'm seeing, I just don't know for sure if that's all there is, you know, if, if I'm quote unquote getting it or if there's anything that I need to look for. So I just being able to admit that I'm holding on to something kind of gives me just an opportunity to just to just see that I'm holding. Loosen your grip. <laughs> yeah. That's it. It's interesting. You know, I mean, how much of what we consider to be discomfort just comes from our overinvestment in comfort. Right. Earlier before the episode, uh, Jackie and I were talking and she was like, you know, feeling kind of anxious. And, and uh, it's like, well, why though? Like, are you, are you sure you're feeling anxious? You know, you're just feeling at the moment, but we immediately were like, well, right. But you know, I'm comfortable now and I don't know what's going to happen in the future. Right. And that's what it is. It's just like, I, I don't, I don't know who I'm going to be when I go through this change. And so while I'm only feeling change, I'm translating as fear. I'm translating as a, as anxiety because I'm holding on to the person I think I am now. When in reality, you've never been that person. You've always been changing. You don't get, you know, nervous to get up out of bed and go to the fridge and get some cereal in the morning, but you've changed every step of the way. You're just not thinking about it. That's really the point. You're not thinking about it. You're just doing it. You know, it's interesting what you were saying about carving your way through life. You know, because it's like, I feel like I'm just being forced through this. This is you. This is you. You are existence. 
It's not that you don't have a choice. It's that there's nothing but you. Mm -hmm. This is it. And it's going to be going on for the rest of your existence. For existence forever. This is what it is. It's just ongoing process and experience. And it does not have to be this grueling thing that we think it is. It doesn't. Most of that is just us trying to hold on. But when we don't hold on, we grow. And when we're growing and actually getting out of the way, it becomes effortless. It really does. But you have to learn to just breathe. You know, stop trying so hard. And I know that sounds counterintuitive, but it's true. You know, it's like, God, I got to get over my shit. That's not helping. <laughs> yeah, at all. If anything, you just solidify the fact that you think you got a lot of shit. Now you got a whole other fucking chapter of that book you got to burn. <laughs> You know, and that's that's really what it is. Like, stop making a story. You don't need it. You don't need the story. You're already the process. You don't need a story about it because the story is not the process. It's just a perception of the process. And you know that because you can change it. You can change your perception of the process and you do it all the time. But none of the perceptions are the truth. None of them. The perception that you have nothing to say is not the truth. The perception that you have more to say than anyone else is not the truth. The perception that you have no value is not the truth. The perception that others have less value than you is also not the truth. These are just perceptions. These are just ways of seeing yourself. And as soon as you invest in them as truth, the world that goes with that perception just fucking pounds in on you. Your brain will always take your chosen perception and back it up. Always. You know, it's funny because... We were talking about cherry picking and, and it could be the most ridiculous thing. There's a, a lodge down the road called the old, old coot lodge. I'm like, fuck, they knew I was coming. <laughs> and it's just that absurd, right? All of a sudden you start thinking to yourself like oh, things, people are telling me something and they're not, you're just afraid. You're afraid you judge yourself. And so every little thing you hear, every little thing you see is all of a sudden backing up what you either want to see or fear to see. Before you know it, every time you see 11, 11, you think it's fucking angel numbers. And it's just because you're, you're, you're biased. You're looking for something, right? Or you're running from something. And the alternative is just to not. That's really all it is. Like you're already doing, you're doing it. All of you are doing it. You're doing the best you can right now. And yet somehow we seem to get in there and go, but if I think about this a little bit more <laughs> and take my attention away from what I'm doing, maybe I'll get better at doing and it's the dumbest thing. But again, we have this investment in thought. Thinking is a lot like hitting the brakes on change. You know, that's all it is. All of a sudden, all of this influx of information and, and, and data, you just slow it the fuck down. And it's because you don't feel like you're able to deal with it. You're like, I'm going to think about this. Make it about me, form a little story, and react to it. Because then I'm dealing with that rather than everything else and that's what we do and it's just because we're afraid of change and it's okay to be afraid of change but recognize that you're really just being afraid of yourself because you are change and that's where the conflict comes from you don't have to be narrating the story you don't have to believe the narration you can do it all day long you can create all kinds of narrations this morning, Ray woke up and on an epic journey found his, set himself a joint on the table. And things were good. There's one story. Alternatively, Ray woke up and couldn't find a joint. <laughs> things were still good. And that's it, it really just comes down to the fact that none of the stories you tell yourself are true. None of them. Why do you need a story? Because that is consistently the biggest question I get from everyone. And it's like, well... You know, how do I, maybe I should just think this. It's like, or not, or not. What remains when you stop telling your, yourself a story? What remains when you stop trying to figure out where you're going or who you are or what impact you're having or what mean, what it means about you? You remain. You remain in all of your impact. Isn't that funny? It was just like, we want to take notes. This is how I'm doing now. You know, and it's taking away from what we're doing. We don't have to have notes. I'm already everything I've become up until now. Right? I don't need to go back and make sure. But we look inside our mind and it's like we're looking for a bookshelf full of knowledge instead of a black hole full of potential. 
And that's exactly what it is. You can reach inside your mind and find anything. Anything. But as Andrew said, it can be fucking jarring, especially when they're new perceptions and new experiences that your, your comfort zone up until now has not allowed you to see or not really given you the opportunity to look at. And so it's just like when we were teenagers where all of a sudden like judgment from our peers really settled in for the first time and it felt like the worst fucking thing in the world because it was really our first raw experience of it. Same is true for self-loathing, depression, anxiety. All of our first times with these are crushing, right? But we get used to them. Why? Because we start to understand them if we're lucky, unless we run from them. And then we try to cope and we try to get them to go away. So if there's any resolution I can offer to anyone, it's that there is no resolution. You can't resolve your thoughts. They're always going to exist. You just don't have to let them ruin your life or govern your actions. But if you don't look at them, if you're afraid to see them or even be a part of them, they will always influence you. You will make subtle choices and you will say certain things just to keep yourself away from the things that make you uncomfortable. And that will stop you from seeing doors and opportunities for growth. It's worth it to be uncomfortable. It's worth it to be afraid. Because in that, you learn to empathize with everyone else. And while it sucks at the time, once you're out the other side of that, it feels so good. And you know that from every hard thing you've ever faced, every challenge you've ever made it through that you thought you couldn't do. And then you got through and went, wow, I fucking did that. And while it sucked, you are reaping the rewards. Yeah. And <clears throat> just being willing to go into new and different situations, you know, like the willingness to make a jump or a leap, you know, and doing things that you realize like you want to do deep down, but there's certain things and you know perceptions that get in the way of of that but they're just you know habitual just assumptions and you, know, you continue to jump into new and different things like as i've done that at different points in my life and you know avoided doing it in others there's this thought that you know there's you can avoid yourself and avoid you know your growth forever and then you start to be more self-honest with that as i've been more self-honest about that you know, it's like you start to realize all the things that held you back from growing and all the things that didn't hold you back but that were there and were comfortable enough and were options that you that you took only because you know they were more comfortable but you know, as you keep going through your life the the comfort doesn't you know it's not enjoyable it's not full it's not life it's very very stagnant and so then it's like okay I'm noticing that about the comforts and what is the alternative there's no alternative there's continuing to jump in to, to new things because you know what is yeah what is what is life if not just a bunch of different shifting new experiences and it becomes you know a lot more a feeling like an adventure there's a little bit more excitement once as I've started to look at it more like that and seeing different opportunities to jump into new stuff and push those bounds and see what see what I'm capable of and find out you know that whole potential thing that people talk about that there's a point one day maybe you'll meet the the person that you are that has the fullest potential and it's very much along this track of like optimizing yourself becoming you know the best version of yourself and every time that's even focused on or looked at it's like just another distraction from the experience that you're having right now what you're going through right now 
situation that you're in right now, which is life. You know, it is actually the only thing that I've ever been going through. It's not about getting to a point where like even things are overcome, you know, certain perceptions, you know, certain weaknesses or whatever. It's just jumping into new things to find out that it wasn't even something to overcome. It was just something that you have different opportunities to face and really find out what you're, what you're capable of. And then that continues to open up new doors and you start to realize more and more about yourself and just what you're capable of. Yeah, it's limiting to your potential to fixate on an idea of your highest potential. Because then you're like locking, it's like you're walking down a hallway of endless doors of different opportunities that are constantly presenting themselves in each moment. And you're like, locking all the other ones and just trying to go down one and forcing it is just never worth it um because you're going to continue to grow regardless and you can't avoid uncertainty and so if you can't escape it might as well embrace it and just let it happen and it's it becomes fun over time so that i think that's what andrew was getting at to like look at your shit and be like, oh, that's interesting. And wow, I I was never open to that perspective before. And I don't know, now I can sit with that. And even if it is uncomfortable, just let it be there. And then you're like, oh, it doesn't have as much power over me anymore. It's like, yeah, I feel uncomfortable, but just it's paradoxical because you think when you have a habitual thought, it's like, oh, well, there's a, that's something I need to work on or uh, something that you feel like you're weak at or an insecurity, like you feel like you need to work on those things, but really fixating on the fixating on them is reinforcing them. And it's not about like convincing yourself of the opposite, like instead of being like, oh, I'm I'm like awkward telling yourself oh no I'm super confident and eloquent like because then there's a bar and and then you have that hanging over your head in every moment whereas otherwise if you don't think about it like it really is just not following the thoughts and just letting them pass because there's a whole different reality happening like out outwardly it's I mean every experience is just as valid and there's a lot to be learned from getting caught up in your shit but yeah it's either let go or be dragged through your shit be dragged by holding on to the fleeting thoughts or emotions that seem to be so all-consuming in the moment but then if you just sit with it it just it's there it's like you're chilling with your demons like smoking a joint you're like yeah you fucking assholes and you're sitting there with them mm-hmm. and uh you can make your your own kind of peace with that mm-hmm. but it's also kind of annoying because it's like oh they're never going away mm-hmm. i can't guarantee that mm-hmm. and trying to get them away is keeping them around or at least making them look like demons mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah because they don't they don't have to go away um my identity very much feels like the killer of my potential because it's like <laughs> <laughs> and it sounds like you know not like that sounds like so epic like the killer of my potential is like my identity but it's just because I and I say it that way because it's like this kind of person would do this kind of thing and so because I identify or I want to I want to be I, I want to embrace being this kind of person or I have decided that I am this kind of person. I've also decided what that kind of person would do. And so um, almost by default, the potential has been laid out in a specific path. And so that's why that's why it feels like my identity is the killer of my potential because if I'm not saying that I'm any kind of person, then everything's on the table. 
It, but if I'm, uh, if I have anxious thoughts and then I say that I'm an anxious person, now I will only do what an anxious person would do versus just saying, oh shit, anxious thoughts are there and I don't need to dig into where they came from or what they mean. Just, oh, that's there. Okay. Let's not, let's not stress about it because it's not a problem to solve. It's just there. It's just an option. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. Like we just were like, but I don't like that option. It's like that has nothing to do with it. You know, that's not going to do a thing for you. It's still going to be there, right? It's the acceptance of the fact that they're optional that allows you to dance with them rather than get trapped by them. But that said, I, I think I wanted to to because I know we're at a retreat and we're uh, we're going to be hanging out there very shortly. So we're going to open this up to to Q and A, but. It took me the longest time to understand how much is actually in it. And it's something that we tend to run from. But I just want to say those moments of silence, those moments where it's calm and it's still and you're emotional as fuck, possibly in the fetal position in the dark, doesn't matter. It's just you and the moment you're in. Those moments are so important. They're so important. It's so easy to want to run from them, try and cover them up, distract yourself from them. And that's where you're really starting to get a feel for you. That's where self-knowledge is. It's not a concept. It's an ongoing process of revealing more of yourself, of becoming more aware of yourself and everything that's in there. But as that happens, it's so important not to react to it. Because you can get so caught up. And the more you see, the more that's true. Relaxation and awareness go hand in hand. The more relaxed you can be, the more awareness you will have the more empathy you'll be able to access and the less lost you will feel. And that is my closing thought for that. <laughs> that was good for Q&A. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah? Let's do that. Yeah. Anybody else? Yeah? Anybody yeah. have questions? Anyone? <sighs> That's a good answer. Okay. Well, in that case, I think we're done. This has been a fun short episode. Anything you want to toss in to wrap this fucker up? Uh, it has been a blast. And yeah, I mean, um, yeah, this weekend has been very informative in a lot of ways. And yeah, it's not it's, done. It's great. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. it's funny as I, yesterday, I was like, I feel like I'm not working through anything. And then by the end of the night, I was like, I worked through so much shit. <laughs> <laughs> and closing thought is just don't judge your progress. Mm -hmm. And that's the wall I'm beating my head against currently. So, mm -hmm. yeah, but it's okay. Um, I'm already working through it and it'll all happen how it happens. I'm just trying to stay open and just keep looking. Yeah, I definitely um, appreciate being able to surprise myself because when I tell myself I know, I know the lessons I've learned. I know where I'm at. I know what I'm doing, right? And so I, I love when I when I can have those kind of unfiltered moments where I surprise myself because I got caught up in a narrative. I got caught up in a in a an expectation, and. And despite getting caught up, I surprised myself because I didn't, I didn't run from getting caught up. And I appreciate just being able to surprise myself more and more. And, and the less I tell myself what kind of person I am, the more I can just see that I don't have to be one kind of person. I can just show up and that's good enough. This has been a fun episode. I would like to say, fun. oh, exactly, fun in quotes. It should be the title of the episode, <laughs> fun. Um, <laughs> when you find yourself afraid, I, I think this is something that that's really helped, is that just in the same way that we tend to think like we're dealing with thoughts instead of thought, that we're dealing with doubts instead of doubt, we tend to think that we're dealing with fears instead of just fear. And when you're afraid, your brain's going to try and pick something. It's going to go, it's this, or it's that. And the temptation for that comes from the fact that if you know what it is, you might be able to solve it. And it's never that. 
you know, it's just fear as a whole. You're afraid. You're afraid. It doesn't matter what you're afraid of. You're afraid. Accept that. Accept that you're afraid. Look at it. Look at it without judging it. Look at your fear. And be afraid. Because if you look at it for what it is, then at least you're in the experience of it, not running from it. And that's when it will change. But as long as you're trying to get away from your fear, it grows. Every part of you that you fight gets stronger because you give it your strength in fighting it. Just relax. You'll find your balance. Yeah, the the attention just to thought itself is there's a pull to it and uh yeah it's uh it's never going to be the sole perception of what's actually going on what's actually happening and so bring your attention back to you know just where you're at and then just talk to myself is uh yeah all you got to do and then stay there and you know take responsibility as you go and continue to you know recognize more and, and learn more about yourself rinse and repeat and it does get easier and i don't need you to believe me but if you've been watching me and listening to me for however long you've been listening to the podcast i still go through the shit it may not sound like it but that's just because I don't mind going through the shit. It does get easier. So thank you for joining us. This has been a lot of fun. We're going to go and hang out with everybody here at the retreat. And we will catch up with you next time. Ow. Bye, everyone. Bye. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Yeah.